Every day in the U.S., 46 people die from overdosing on prescription painkillers, also known as opioid drugs. Opioids like oxycodone, hydrocodone, and morphine are great if you need some serious pain relief. They're also known to trigger addicting feelings of euphoria. We want to know what makes opioids so addicting, what makes them deadly, and is there a way to prevent death by overdose? Alexander Sandweiss is going to help explain this. He says the opioid addiction factor starts with dopamine, a natural chemical that motivates the brain to keep the body alive. So we, we probably wouldn't have a desire to eat if it weren't for dopamine. We might not have a desire to go to sleep if it weren't for dopamine, or at least enjoying sleep. Uh, we probably wouldn't have much of a desire to uh, mate and procreate if it wasn't for dopamine. So dopamine obviously has some very important roles in maintaining our homeostasis and, and driving us to certain activities. By rewarding the brain with feel-good sensations when we do things like eat, sleep, or have sex, dopamine trains us to pursue these activities, but opioids cause the body to experience an unnatural rush of dopamine. And if this happens multiple times, the body is trained to seek that feel-good experience again and again. The release of dopamine in the brain is controlled by a dopamine neuron. When I say a dopamine neuron, I mean a neuron that makes dopamine and releases it somewhere else in the brain. The dopamine neuron begins in the ventral tegmental area, which is in the midbrain, and it's got this long axon that releases the dopamine in the nucleus accumbens which is in what's called the basal forebrain, via the medial forebrain bundle. And that release of dopamine gets us kind of going with this response of, of pleasure and happiness and, over time, addiction. Sandweiss says the science is still unclear on why some people are more susceptible to addiction than others. Okay, now we're ready to find out what exactly happens when opiates enter the body. First, Sandweiss says most people don't realize our bodies have an opioid system already in place. It's activated by natural compounds that exist in our bodies, which are called endogenous opioids. These are molecules kind of floating around in our body that have a purpose to kind of tone down the pain pathway. Endogenous opioids help with other things too, but we'll get to that later. Now, prescription painkillers are called exogenous opiates. When people are taking in exogenous opiates, all you're doing is activating an endogenous system with too much opiate. So what exactly happens when opioids enter the body? If they're administered into the body via IV or you take them orally, they're eventually going to get into the bloodstream and eventually circulate to the central nervous system where they have to cross a barrier. It's called the blood-brain barrier. Most opioids do cross that blood-brain barrier, get in, and will act uh, wherever there's an opiate receptor. By binding to certain opiate receptors, either in the brain, the spinal cord, or the peripheral nervous system, Opioid drugs can block pain. But that's not all. Let's go back to the brain. So in the case of morphine, it'll act on what's called the mu opioid receptor, or the MOR. Specifically in the ventral tegmental area, opiates will bind that mu opioid receptor on what are called GABAergic interneurons. Normally without the opiate, the GABAergic neuron will inhibit the dopamine neuron. So quick review. This GABAergic neuron usually prevents the dopamine neuron from triggering dopamine release, kind of like a leash keeps a dog from chasing a squirrel. When morphine enters the scene, it overactivates the mu opioid receptors, which essentially turns off the GABAergic neuron. That means there's nothing holding back the release of dopamine. In other words, the dog is off the leash, and that release of dopamine is what causes the euphoric pleasure sensation that eventually leads to addiction. Now here's the thing, dopamine isn't necessarily deadly, even in large doses. So what makes opioid overdoses lethal? Here's where it gets real. Endogenous opioids also help with processes like unconscious breathing. There happen to be opiate receptors in a brain region called the pre-Botzinger complex, which is in the medulla of the brainstem. And activation of the opiate receptors in that region of the brain tells our, our breathing to kind of slow down. It's called respiratory depression. When the level of opioids in the body gets too high, it makes breathing slow down so much that it finally just stops. Fortunately, some emergency personnel carry a non-addictive medication called naloxone, the nemesis of all opioids. Naloxone is an opioid receptor antagonist. It'll throw off all of the opiates from the receptors, including in the medulla, and stop the slow respiratory rate. The patient will then start breathing at a normal rate, and they'll come out of it within a matter of minutes. 